All right, so we, I want to show you something on the peak side lobe levels of pulses or in the discrete case, suppose we have a discrete pulse of <coughs> um, same intensity, let's say n, n points. So we can look at both the problems and uh, For uh, reasons that will become clear, let me uh, take the pulse to be of height 1 over t. So if you look at its uh, Fourier transform, you can do this quickly. So this is ft e raised to minus j omega t dt <coughs> 0 to t, a pulse. So if I substitute for ft, this is 1 over t integral 0 to t e raised to minus j omega t dt. If I do the... <coughs> So this is e raised to minus j omega t minus j omega t 0 to t. So this is 1 minus e raised to minus j omega t once I substitute the limits <coughs> here uh, minus j omega t. So the standard technique here is you pull out half of this out. So e raised to minus uh, j omega so this because I already absorbed the minus uh, this is uh, now e raised to minus j omega t goes outside <coughs> then this is e raised to j omega t by 2 minus e raised to minus j omega t by 2 <coughs> over omega t but this is uh, 2j uh, sine omega t by 2 so jj cancels so we get the result to be the standard expression sine omega t by 2 divided by omega t by 2 of course you can write this as sinc omega t by 2 also so if I plot this uh, Fourier transform it looks like this uh, let's say I plot the uh, <coughs> square uh, so phase is linear remember there is also a phase term here e raised to minus j omega t by 2 so linear phase and a sink of uh, uh, magnitude so if I plot this this uh, the magnitude square <coughs> looks like this Uh, so this is where the first zero is so so of course this function is now sinc or sine <coughs> omega t by 2 divided by omega t by 2 the whole thing squared that's what I'm plotting here uh, so notice that because I divided by t and so on t here the peak value here is sine theta by theta as theta goes to zero it's one so the peak value is one <clears throat> so what I am interested in is to talk about this peak. This is your peak side lobe level. This is the first side lobe. Uh, so we want to look at uh, how much this is and to show you an interesting property. <clears throat> how, how, how far uh, below it is compared to the peak. Uh, so this is of course the bandwidth is 2 omega naught. But omega naught, you can see where the uh, function goes to zero. That will be when omega t by two goes to pi. So if you equate that to pi, you get omega naught to be <coughs> two pi over t. So this is the two-sided bandwidth, and one-sided bandwidth is of course omega naught. So that is two pi over t. And if you call 1 over t to be f0, so this is 2 pi f0, where f0 is 1 over t. So 1 over t is the one-sided bandwidth, or 2 over t is the two-sided bandwidth. And if this is omega naught, which is 2 pi over t, 
then you can see clearly this is uh, 3 pi over t and so consequently the peak side lobe level if I call it omega 1 that's at the I'm sorry this is 4 pi over t right this point and uh, so the middle point is going omega 1 where the peak side lobe is 3 pi over t and so if you try to if we call this to be the gain if I evaluate the gain at, uh, so I'll do it here, at, let's say omega 1, what is this going? So g omega 1 is uh, sine omega 1 which is 3 pi over t multiplied by t by 2. This is over 3 pi <coughs> over t by t by 2. So t cancels both the places. 3 pi by 2 is, uh, sine 3 pi by 2 is 1. And this is so this will come out to be 2 over 3 pi the whole square point is it is independent of uh, so if I plot this in dB 10 log g of omega 1 will be 10, <coughs> 10 log or 20 log uh, 2 over 3 pi and uh, so this is 20 log Uh, 2 over 3 pi and that turns out to be minus 13.46 dB. So the interesting part is uh, irrespective of the length of the, you cannot push the peak side lobe down by increasing the pulse length. Of course if you increase the pulse length as you can see the main uh, so if t goes to infinity you are going to give you have the main beam shrinks and all this uh, omega 1 everything will go towards the center so you may try to see a picture like this <coughs> as t becomes larger but this will still remain at uh, minus 13.46 db <coughs> now this is also true for a linear array suppose you have a linear array placed uniformly placed so then very quickly it's uh, transformed f of omega is uh, integral a uh, summation k equal to 0 through n minus 1 e raised to minus j k omega 1 over n outside because I decided to take the heights to be 1 or <coughs> 1 over n so if you do this summation this is 1 minus e raised to minus j n omega over 1 minus e raised to minus j omega so again <coughs> if I if I pull uh, half of outside, this is of course can be written as e raised to minus j n minus 1 omega by 2. Then you have sine n omega by 2 over sine omega by 2 <coughs> and n here. So f omega squared once again is uh, the, the digital thing sine n omega by 2 over n sine. Uh, omega by 2 the whole square so once again if you plot it it has very similar shape uh, like this and notice that this point omega naught is when numerator goes to 0 I mean to 1 that's when this quantity equal to pi so that's 2 pi over n so once again this is 4 pi over n and so this peak side lobe, <coughs> this is what we are again interested. So the peak side lobe at omega 1 is at uh, 3 pi over n. And if you compute uh, this quantity, suppose I call it g naught of omega. So g naught at omega 1 is going to be, so you put omega 1 here, this becomes 1. So that's 1 over n sine omega 1 by 2 squared but uh, omega 1 is uh, 3 pi over n so this becomes <coughs> 1 uh, so 1 over n sine of uh, 3 pi over 2n square oh sine uh, sine x you can expand it as x minus 2 x etc so this is 1 over n into 3 pi by 2n minus 3 pi by 2n the whole cube by 3 factorial etc plus terms etc now you notice that n cancels 
and then as n tends to infinity all the other terms goes to zero and once again you get uh, two per, you you get the result to be uh, 2 over 3 pi uh, square so which is the same as in the digital case saying that once again the even in the digital case <coughs> discrete case this is one compared to the main beam the side lobe the peak side lobe drops only by 13.46 dBs. The interesting thing is you cannot improve this by simply putting in more and more sensors. Of course, if you do that, what is going to happen is this, this the main beam will shrink, but the peak side lobe will once again stay at uh, minus 13.46 dB. Of course, then the answer is the natural question is how do you reduce the side lobes? So you have to think of uh, modulating this by some other windows. So in radar and so on, radar for example, the Taylor windows are used or Dolph Chebyshev windows. So then you can, the windows have their fast decaying side lobes so that you they convert the picture in the frequency domain has a better uh, side lobes with a better uh, peak side lobe ratio, uh, peak side lobe levels.